Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install Logic Pro. We'll be installing Logic 10.7.5 in this video. I'll show you how to install Logic's sound library, how to manage the sound library, and how to install it on an external drive. And I'll also show you how to turn on Logic's advanced tools. So let's jump right into this. Okay, so let's install Logic Pro. But one thing you may want to check is go up to Apple and then go to About This Mac and check what version of Mac OS you're running. If you want to install Logic 10.7.5, this requires Mac OS Monterey 12.3. So you have to have at least version 12.3 or higher to install Logic 10.7.5. So I have the correct version of Mac OS. Next, I'm gonna go down to my dock and I'm going to find the App Store. And what you can do is just search up Logic Pro. Here it is. Now, if you've already purchased it, you'll just see a download button here. If not, you'll see a button here where you can buy it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click the download button and this will download Logic Pro on my computer. There is a lot more to it than this. So I'm gonna wait a moment while this downloads and installs and I'll be right back. Okay, so now Logic Pro has been installed. I could just click open here and start working in Logic, but there's a couple things I wanna show you that I find super helpful for quickly navigating to my Logic projects, as well as accessing Logic Pro from the dock. So I'm gonna close out the App Store, and what I'm gonna do next is go up to Go. I'm gonna to go to Applications, or you can press Shift-Command-A, and then in your Applications folder, find the Logic Pro app, and then drag this down to your dock for easy access. So now if I ever want to open up Logic, I don't have to go to the Applications folder, I can just open it straight from the dock. One other thing I wanna show you is the Logic Projects folder. Currently I have mine saved to the sidebar, and the Logic Projects folder is the default location where Logic likes to save its projects. So inside of here, you'll see some of these are folders. These are Logic Project folders, and these other ones with the Logic icon are project packages. Now we will talk about the difference between Logic Project folders and packages in a future video, but this is the default location where Logic likes to save its projects and having easy access to this and just knowing where to find it can be troublesome for new users of Logic. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my Logic folder from my sidebar and I'll show you how to find the Logic folder. So what you do is you go to Macintosh HD. If you don't see your hard drive there, you can go to Finder, Preferences, and then you can make sure that hard disks are shown, and that will show your Macintosh HD. So open that up. This will open up a Finder window. You're gonna go to Users, go to your username, go to Music, and then from here you'll see a folder labeled Logic. This is your Logic Projects folder that I just showed you. So all I need to do now is just drag this over into the sidebar, and now I can easily access this folder from any Finder window without having to go through all of that navigation again. Okay, so now we're finally ready to open up Logic. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, the first time you open up Logic, it may take a bit longer to open, so don't be alarmed if it takes a minute or two to open. It's just scanning all of the plugins you might have on your system. And by default, it will probably open up this window. This is like the project chooser window. There's a lot of different starter grids. You can explore recent projects, start a new project. One of the things I like to do is set the default action when opening Logic. You can do that by going up to Logic Pro and then going down to Settings. Now, if you're in Logic 10.7.5 or higher, this will be Logic Pro Settings, just as it looks here. But if you're using Logic 10.7.4 and earlier, this will say Logic Pro Preferences. Then I'm just gonna go to General. And from here, you'll see a startup action. I like to set this to ask, and this will just ask me what I want to do each time I open Logic. So let me go ahead and just quit Logic, and then I'll reopen it, and you'll see that a different dialog will appear. So now I have this startup dialog instead of the project chooser, and I'll select create a new empty project. Now Logic always forces you to create at least one track. I'm gonna create a software instrument track. We're not gonna do anything with this in this video, but Logic does force you to have at least one track in your project. Now the next thing you wanna do is you wanna turn on all of your advanced tools in Logic. You can do this by going up to Logic Pro, going down to Settings or Preferences, and then go down to Advanced. From here, you wanna make sure that this option, Enable Complete Features, 
is turned on. In older versions of Logic, this might say turn on advanced tools, and you might be able to select some of these individually. Just make sure that everything is turned on to ensure that you're getting the full feature set of Logic Pro. With the complete features turned off, Logic sort of functions like a glorified version of GarageBand. A lot of the more advanced features are not shown. Next, let's install the sound library. You're gonna go up to Logic Pro again, go to sound library, and then go to open sound library manager. Now I've already installed most of my sound library. You can see that all of these say that they're already installed, but you can click on any of these that are not installed and you can click install and it'll download those sound libraries. So this includes a lot of loops and samples as well as reverb impulse responses. All in all, if you download all of these at once, it's over 30 gigabytes of files. So it can certainly take up a lot of extra space on your hard drive, but I'm gonna show you in just a moment how you can migrate your sound library over to an external drive to save space on your internal hard drive. So up here, you'll see that this is downloading. And again, if you're downloading the full sound library right now, you might as well just walk away from the computer for a few hours and come back later when it's done. Okay, so after it installs your sound library content, you just need to type in the password for your computer to install the sound libraries. You can click up here and you'll see that this is indexing all of the Apple loops that were downloaded. That basically just means that it's moving them to the correct location and making sure that we can find them within the loop library or loop browser over here, which you can get to by clicking here to open, or you can press the O button on your keyboard to toggle this. Now, let's say that I don't want to waste over 30 gigabytes of drive space on my internal drive on my computer. I wanna save Logic's entire sound library to an external drive. Well, you can do this quite easy in Logic. Just go up to Logic Pro, Sound Library, and then select Relocate Sound Library. So what this will do is it shows all of the drives that are connected to your computer. You select the drive that you want to install to, and then select Relocate. Now you can see here, I've already relocated my sound library to this CMG 14 terabyte drive. You can see here, it says current sound library files location, but by default, it will save these to your Macintosh hard drive. So that's how you do that. You just select the drive, click relocate, wait a bit for it to move all the files over. Again, this could take several minutes or up to an hour to move everything over and you're good to go. So that's how to get started installing Logic, turning on the advanced tools, downloading and installing the sound library and relocating your sound library. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.